Imagine something that skyrockets your testosterone by 200% in just 20 minutes. Would you believe it? Or that the same force can combat diseases, make you feel good, and make you more attractive? Yeah, we're talking about the sun. With summer on the horizon and beach body goals in mind, it's crucial that we decode the sun's vital role in our health. In this video, we're going to uncover why mainstream advice on sun exposure could be misleading you, the surprising ways sunlight boosts sex hormones and mood, also how seed oils in your diet can make you burn faster and damage your skin. Let's dive right in. The narrative we often hear is pretty clear. Too much sun is harmful and we should avoid direct exposure as much as possible. Dermatologists and health experts push for sunscreen around the clock, suggesting we might as well live in a cave, avoiding everything and staying in our air conditioned home. But let's pause and rethink that narrative, the one that's commonly sprayed out in mainstream media. Picture this, our ancestors thrived under the sun, evolving over thousands of years with its warmth and medicinal properties on their skin. You ever notice how people near the equator have darker skin? That's nature's adaptation at its finest. It's a sign of melanin. It's a clear sign we're meant to embrace the sun, not hide from it. While most of us are aware of the sun's role in vitamin D synthesis, its ability to enhance our well-being does not stop there. Two lesser known yet crucial benefits of regular sun exposure are the boost in nitric oxide production and a significant increase in testosterone levels. Yeah, guys, the thing that makes you nice and strong and attractive and horny, here's how these two contribute to our overall health. With nitric oxide, it's amazing. It's a blood pressure and cardiovascular booster. When UV rays touch our skin, they do way more than just assist in vitamin D. They stimulate that release of nitric oxide, a compound with potent vasodilating properties, which expands and relaxes our blood vessels. It reduces our blood pressure and it improves our blood flow to all the areas. If you're in the gym, if you're in bed, that's nitric oxide at its finest. So hear this, even lasts a while. For instance, a visit to a sunny place like Hawaii can lead to an increased production of nitric oxide followed by lower blood pressure and enhanced vascular health. Effects that peak around 48 hours after sun exposure. It's a long time. Also, the sun's also amazing for immune support and infection defense. Beyond its cardiovascular benefit, nitric oxide plays a pivotal role in our body's immune response. It acts as a defense mechanism against pathogens, suggesting that regular sun exposure might not just be good for you, but also for bolstering your immune system, vitamin D and the like. And then testosterone we really came for. It's a natural boost in testosterone levels. One of the greatest boosts I've ever seen recorded in history. One of the most intriguing aspects of sunlight exposure is its impact on testosterone levels. Research has shown that UV radiation, particularly when its skin exposure is maximized from the chest, back, and genitals, leads to a significant increase in testosterone production. Over like 200%. This hormone boost not only enhances libido, but also contributes to muscle growth, bone density, and overall energy levels. For men, the effect is particularly pronounced with exposure to the genitals like I said, and it leads to substantial increases in testosterone, which helps to build muscle, feel good, increase your libido. And this lasts for a week or more, guys. It's not just, you know, a 24-hour thing. Also, the sun helps our well-being. With that increase in testosterone and endorphins, due to sun exposure, really linked to how well we feel. Higher testosterone levels associated with improved mood, confidence, and cognitive function, making sunlight a natural enhancer of both body and mind. Listen, if sunlight produces endorphins in our body naturally, it has throughout millennia, how could it not be good for us? Why would we avoid something that makes us feel good, that is produced internally. So we now understand the sun is amazing. So let's get 10 hours of sun exposure? Not quite. Navigating the maze of sunscreen options and health guidelines can be overwhelming. Yet understanding how to enjoy the sun safely is crucial, especially when armed with the knowledge that not all sun exposure is harmful, as we clearly just talked about. Let's debunk some myths and lay out a clear plan to healthy sun habits the truth about sunscreen. The market is flooded with sunscreens 
claiming to offer full protection against harmful rays. However, the presence of certain chemicals in the lack of efficacy in blocking the right types of UV light call for a more discerning approach. Chemical sunscreens containing avobenzone and oxybenzone absorb UV radiation, but can also penetrate the skin and enter the bloodstream. These are known carcinogens, guys, things that cause cancer and disease. Zinc is gonna be your best option for sunscreen, okay? Just know that. Also, tallow is great. Now let's go into this, the problem with seed oils. Many sunscreens and food contain seed oils high in polyunsaturated fats, which can oxidize when exposed to UV light, which worsens skin damage. Opting for products without these oils, canola, sunflower, safflower, soybean oil, can reduce the risk of inflammation in oxidation. Yeah, it's good that we know that this affects our skin topically, but what about when we consume it? These seed oils are particularly high in omega-6 linoleic acid, and it plays a direct role of how our skin responds to sunlight. When we consume seed oils found in many processed foods, dressings and fried dishes high in polyunsaturated fatty acids, or PUFAs, we incorporate these fats into our cell membranes. The structure of our skin, composed of vast arrays of cell membranes, forming this protective bilipid layer, becomes enriched with these omega-6 fats. Here's where the concern arises. PUFAs, especially linoleic acid, are prone to oxidation when exposed to UV light. This chemical reaction produces harmful compounds that can lead to damaged cells and DNA, which leads to skin inflammation accelerating aging, guys. It's what we eat and it's also what we put on our skin. Saturated fats, though, things like tallow, coconut oil, are more chemically stable and less likely to oxidize under sun exposure. They have way less linoleic acid, probably like two to three percent linoleic acid, compared to canola oil, which can have 20 to 50 percent of linoleic acid. Now let's talk about how to eat for an internal sunscreen. Adjusting our diet to minimize the intake of high linoleic acid seed oils can make our skin less susceptible to sun-induced damage. Opting for minimally processed fat can enhance the skin resilience against UV rays. Corporate fats are low in polyunsaturated fat and high in saturated fat. Things like coconut oil, butter, tallow, even a little bit of avocado oil. These are perfect for improving skin health even cholesterol, things like egg yolk, perfect for maintaining skin health and reducing oxidative stress. This is all good to know because you need to mind your snacks and cooking oils. Be vigilant by the type of oils used in processed foods and those used for cooking. Olive oil is a better choice for cold dishes where coconut oil is more stable for cooking. All right, we've heard a lot of mumbo jumbo. The sun's amazing for us. The mainstream media is lying. Let's go into some smart sun practices. Understanding your skin type can help with sun exposure. Hear about this, if you are fair skinned, don't have a lot of melanin, you're not too tan, I would say aim for morning or late afternoon sun when the UV index is lower. It allows for vitamin D synthesis, a nice tan without a reduced risk of burning. Start slow guys, if you're real pale sin. Gradual exposure, so short sun sessions. I know a guy who is from the UK, super pale. He went to Costa Rica, he even got tan just from morning in late afternoon sun. If you're really fair skin, honestly wear a hat, wear something and don't just be out long. Also, like I said, used tallow, zinc for sunscreen in areas prone. If you're tan, get out there. You're gonna be good to go, okay? If you have high amounts of melanin, just remember, safety first, guys. The sun's amazing, the sun's vital. Before we part ways, let's recap. Sunlight boosts nitric oxide production while significantly benefited our cardiovascular health, proving blood flow, good erections, girls for sex, all that stuff. Reduces blood pressure, increased testosterone and desterone. It leaves us with a good mood, good energy, good vitality. And guess what? Contrary to what dermatologists say in the mainstream media, not all sun exposure is harmful. In moderation, it's essential, guys. And diet plays a crucial role in how our skin responds to the sun. Remember, internal sunscreen and external. And guess what? Choose the right sunscreen. If it has a funny name to it and you don't know any of the ingredients, do not buy the sunscreen. That's it, guys. This is health. Cool health at its finest. Love the sun. Embrace it. Be careful. But that's our light. That's our energy. It comes from the universe, our spirit. Thank you once again. Peace out. Join the community. If you like it, subscribe. Subscribe to the newsletter. We do this shit every week. Let's go.